Hey guys, what's up? It's iPhone here, and welcome to episode 4 of Warframe, the ultimate beginner's guide, where we show you how to get good at Warframe and basically know everything about it within your first couple of weeks of playing if you watch all of these videos before you actually start playing it. So, uh, basically, what we're going to be doing today, guys, is progressing through Venus, going to Mercury, doing the stuff at Mercury. Well, we're not going to be doing that in this video, but, you know, we're going to get the stuff at Mercury, we're going to talk about it and do all those cool things. So, uh, let's take a look at what we need to do to progress on to Mercury, I guess. I already have most of the stuff done, I just have to go and kill a few more Xmas enemies, but you guys will see some uh, footage overlaid of the things that we do, uh, or uh, that I've done as I talk about them, right? So, the first one, which is up there at the top, for whatever reason, is Defeat Jackal at Fusa on Venus. That, in my opinion, should be moved down the list, because it's like one of the last things that you're going to be doing anyway, so... You know, the Defeat 10 Eximus Enemies one on Venus, that one is super easy to do. Basically, all you want to be doing, guys, you see this here little location over here called Egate, the first mission that you play. Every single time you run this mission solo, there's going to be two guaranteed Eximus Enemies that spawn. Sometimes you might get lucky and get four, so just go ahead, play for this missions, uh, or play for this mission a couple times, and then you should be good to go. Like, you'll have that there challenge done in pretty much no time, you just have to keep on replaying this. Or, alternatively, you could uh, keep on playing Fusa, which is a boss mission, which is one that you have to do anyway. And you could keep on replaying that there, like you have to, and get a few kills that way. Um, however, you know, it's not a guaranteed Xmas spawn in this mission either, so, um, you know, your safest bet is Egia over here. Next up, we have uh, Defeat, uh, or Complete 10 Waves of Defense at Tesra on Venus. So basically what I have to do here is stay 10 waves, you know... Play battle uh, whenever you get to the five way point and just keep on playing. Um, best off to do that there in public so it goes faster. Uh, next up you have the rescue hostage at Linea on Venus. Pretty straightforward. You guys have rescued a hostage before in the prologue, the Darvo quest. Super simplistic. Just go ahead and do that there. Uh, super easy. And then we have, obviously, our last point being Fusa, as you progress all the way around. I recommend going Egate, Tessera, uh, Linea, Venera, Aphrodite, and then to Fusa. That's how I would do it. Uh, that's how I did do it, actually, <laughs> of course. So, uh, you get this here, you no know, done. And basically what this is, this is a boss fight, right? So this boss fight is a big corpus mech. Um, what's going to happen is he has four legs. All you have to do is go up and whack those legs, and then he's going to go into a stun state, and then you can basically just whack away at him with your melee weapon. Pretty simplistic. I recommend playing that there on the public as well. Now, the thing with that boss fight is it is going to drop Rhino parts, and Rhino is another Warframe in the game that you can get access to as soon as you hit Master Rank 2, unless they actually change that. I'm not too sure if there is still a Mastery Rank requirement on uh, Rhino. Let's go ahead and take a look here to see if there is. So here's Rhino. Um, what you are able to do is you're able to purchase this blueprint. So you come into this uh, into the market and then you type Rhino in the top right hand corner like I just did there. You click on him. And then you click on the little blue credits and then there you go. You can purchase this blueprint for 35,000 credits. And then what's going to happen is every single time you play that there mission, you're going to get a Rhino Part Blueprint, which you can view down here in the Foundry, right? So, if we take a look, I actually have one, and I've got all of the parts for Rhino. So, I have the Rhino Neuroptics, the Rhino Chassis, and the Rhino Systems, and you can view the parts that you need by hovering over the Blueprint, which you just bought from the market, and also the resources uh, on the side, like Gallium, that you might need, which we'll get later on. So... It is in your best interest to begin building these here as soon as possible. As you guys can see, these will take 12 hours to build. And on the top of that, it's going to take an extra three days to actually build the Rhino together. So you build all of these here at the same time. You start all of these builds at the same time. They'll be done in the next day. Then you start building Rhino, and then he'll be done as soon as possible. Now, you're not necessarily going to be claiming Rhino uh, ASAP. So hold off on actually claiming them because there's going to be another frame that we're going to want to get down the line uh, called Frost, which I recommend higher than Rhino, even though Rhino is a great frame and some players actually like to choose Rhino over Frost. I prefer Frost and that's what I'm going to be showing in this video. We will be getting Rhino at a later date, but it just makes sense to sort of have them sitting here in your foundry pre-built ready for you to claim whatever that time comes that we're going to be using for uh, Rhino. So, you know, I almost said Frost there because I'm an idiot. Also, if you have enough resources to begin building the Taxon, which you should have got after completing the uh, the Venus Junction on Earth, 
you should begin building the taxon because this here will come with a mod called vacuum which will basically pick up items for you meaning that you know every time you play a mission you're going to be more efficient whenever it comes to picking up resources and stuff which is pretty awesome you know so there's no downsides to having the tax in there also if there's any other weapons that you may have which are in here and they're ready to build tab just go ahead and build them um i think the biggest issue that you'll run into whenever you're playing the game is probably the credits which we'll talk about in a minute like there's other ways to um get around getting credits and stuff like let's say for example went into the void that maria alert or playing alerts and stuff which you've already unlocked so different things like that there can be done so the streamline the process of progressing through venus because what's going to happen is the enemies are going to get a get a lot stronger basically you're going to want to pay attention to the weaknesses of the enemies now the enemies here are known as corpus enemies they have shields and the damages uh, or the damage types that will make it easier for you to deal damage to these enemies are electric and cooled. Now, you can also make magnetic damage if you have both of those uh, elements uh, in the form of mods, which I'll show you right now. This is what I did to get through this uh, this planet super fast was this here. This is the scanner, right? The scanner, your melee weapon, super cool. I got the Northwind mod from just casually playing and I was able to throw this here mod on my weapon and it allowed me to deal more damage to the shields because that is what the shield is weak to. If you take a look at the damage 2.0 chart, which I will put in the description below of this video, you'll see that the corpus enemies or the corpus shields will take 25% extra damage from the cold damage and the electric damage and things like that there. So it is pretty cool if you have both a cold mod and an electricity mod uh, put beside one another in this modding section right here. We'll talk a little bit more about the modding section in depth later on. But that's going to allow you to make an elemental combo known as magnetic, which will deal 75% extra damage to shields, which is pretty awesome. So I had that uh, that Northwind mod on my scanner, and I also have uh, the electric mod on my... All right, so I had the cool mod in my scanner and electric mod in the Paris, which was pretty cool, allowed me to deal a lot more damage. But what you'll notice here is the gap between my levels on my weapons, right? My scanner's at max rank, my Paris is level 6, and my later is level 14. Now, the reason that that has happened is because I have been unequipping my weapons to actually level up the scanner first. So that was something I did on purpose, right? It's not that... Uh, you know, I was having all of my weapons equipped and I was just using the scanner. It, I, was, I was actually unequipping the other weapons that I had on. And the reason for that being, even if your weapon is max rank, it's still going to get XP. So if we were to go and run a mission real fast, let's say, for example, we run the uh, the credit alert, which literally just came up. If I can, which I can't, but let's, um, okay, maybe we can't do that there because that's uh, too high level of a mission. But if we were to just play something that I could get done super quickly, like, uh, let's do the exterminate, because I need to do that there to kill the, the Eximus enemies. We're going we're gonna to run through this, and then at the end of the mission, you'll see that your weapon, even though it's max rank, will still earn XP. So, how it works is your, um, your XP is actually split between all of your weapons that you have equipped. All the gear that you have equipped at the time is going to get XP regardless of their level. So that could be max rank level zero, and they're still going to get like the same amount of XP regardless of the level that they are. So depending on the level of the enemy and stuff, you know, that'll determine how much XP they get. If they get used more, like let's say uh, you get, you're get you getting the kills with Scanna, obviously you'll get more XP towards that there because, I mean, you're obviously getting the kill of it, but it's go still going to take a percentage of that XP and then share it among your weapons, right? And um, that's uh, pretty much all there is to say. So you unequip your other weapons, and then the weapon that you want to level up faster, in our case being the Scanna, because it affects our Exalted Blade ability, so that being our fourth one, this here one right here. Uh, having the extra mod capacity on our Scanna, which we get by just leveling up, is super beneficial because it's going to take the mods off our scanner and add it to the Exalted Blade ability and allow us to basically just one-shot any enemy that stands in our way, which is going to be super easy whenever it comes to boss fights. This is also the Xmas enemies that you have to kill, by the way. You guys should already know that there, um, but that was just one of them, and hopefully another one spawns here near the end. It usually is near the end that they spawn anyway, so let's just go ahead and hit this elevator, but you see how easy this is just with the melee weapon, right? It's because we have the cool damage on and we're dealing you know, percentage extra damage, and how the damage works in this game is it's going to take, you know, so let's say your damage is 100 damage, and it's taking 25% of your damage, uh, so the cool damage is taking 25% of your damage, and that turning it into cool damage, what happens is uh, you'll have your 
100 damage, we have 33 impact, 33 puncture, and then 33 slash, and then it'll take 25% off that total number, and then you'll have 25 cool damage, and then that'll be added on on top, so you'll have 125 total damage, and then 25 of that being cool damage, of course, so it's pretty cool, it ups your damage, and it turns it into an extra elemental, uh, or extra form of damage for you, which is pretty awesome, and that is why your mods such as, let's say, for example, a mod that gives you plus puncture, right? That mod isn't so good because it's only taking a percentage off the um, the puncture stat or whatever. So let's say it was 10% of 33%. So whatever 10% of 33% would be, that would be added on on top of that actual puncture stat, right? So that's pretty much all there is to say about that. And that's pretty much it, really. So elemental, uh, elemental mods are so much better than your IPS mods, which is what they're called. So that IPS standing for Impact Puncture Slash, so that is basically all there is. It's only ever really worth modding for IPS or Impact Puncture Slash if the weapons damage, like let's say you, you had like a super awesome impact mod, right? And it gave you like 140% extra impact damage, okay? It would only ever be worth considering to throw that mod on if the weapon's damage was 90% impact damage, if you get what I mean there. So, you know, unless the weapon is totally impact damage, there would be no reason for throwing on that 140% uh, impact damage mod, right? So, that's all there is to that there. Usually, elements trump everything in this game, which is why you can see us, like, basically won the free shotting enemies here. Charge attacking, there's an excellent enemy. He's level 8, get 2 shot it with unranked mods, you know, things like that there. It's just down to your modding, really, guys. Your modding is super important, and also we have enough to actually get out of here. I'm pretty sure I had to kill, like, you know, how many enemies? 3 more enemies, and we killed 2, so I have to run this mission again. Feels bad, man. But, that's really all there is to it, whenever it comes to modding your weapons, right? So, elements trump everything in this game, and it is super, 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 super important to have your elements on. Do not neglect your elements at all. Always run your elements before anything else, unless it's a percentage increase to your base damage, which increases every single stat on the weapon that you're using, such as, let's say, Suresion or uh, Hornet Strike, for example. Those mods will it directly increase every form of damage that you have on your weapon across the board, slash so your impact, your puncture, your slash, your cool, your toxin, your fire, all those stats will be increased by mods, which just give you plus percentage increase to your damage, you know? Um, so I know that was a lot to take in with very little sort of visual representation, but you'll understand what I mean here whenever I show you the scanner. So all you have to do really is pay attention to these stats over here. So we have impact, punch, or slash. Uh, we take off our north wind. You see that that goes down to zero. We press escape, and you'll see that that's not there anymore, right? So then we threw on our north wind again. It takes a percentage of all this damage, so this being 15%, 15% of all this here damage added together, and then gives us that there in our cool damage, right? So that's basically all it does. So 15% of all this added up turns into cool damage on top of that there, and we can increase that by leveling up our north wind. So let's actually go ahead and do that there, because north wind is a mod which we're going to have to level up eventually anyway. So we go ahead north wind, we fusion. Let's see if we can level it up. We can get it that far. 425 endo, no worries. Escape bite. Go on to our scanner, upgrade. And then we can swap it around, and there you go. It increases it to 52.5. Um, now you'll see all these seer stats go down. I don't really think that that means... Okay, hold on, let's go out of that again. Um, why did that change? Why are they red? I don't understand why they are red right now. Did I change something? Oh, I changed. I don't know what I did, but whatever. I think I changed something earlier. Attack speed, 0 0.8. I don't know what I did. Why? I don't know. I understand why all these stats would die, but whatever. Um... But yeah, you know, that is basically increasing your damage for your cool damage, which is going to increase, um, you know, your damage whenever it comes to killing shielded units, right? So that's pretty much that. You need to see them with Volcanic Edge and things like that there. And that's pretty good. So that's really all there is to this episode of the guide. Just going through and uh, getting the expo stuff done. It's super easy, really. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that you have all those frost parts scoured up and uh, not frost parts Sorry, rhino parts and that's pretty much it if I'm being honest with you. So 
Venus is super easy. Um, really, the next challenge is um, Mercury. There's a quest on Mercury. It's super linear, so you'll understand it's super easy as well. And then from that there point onwards, we're going to be moving on to Mars. So you got to do the once a week quest on Mercury and then complete the mission in the far left-hand corner up here, which we'll obviously be doing in the next episode. Um, but for now, it's uh, super linear, easy stuff. And if you guys are wondering, how do I play with other players, Flynn? Um, all you have to do to play with other players is you see this here thing in the top left hand corner, matchmaking solo, set it to public because I recommend doing Tessera and Fusa with people that you're playing with because it's going to take you a few runs on Fusa to actually get all the Rhino parts and it's also going to take you a few runs on, well maybe a few runs on Tessera if you don't have a team that know what they're doing. Uh, but if you do have a team who know what they're doing and you get the 10 waves out of the way the first time you play it, totally fine. You never have to go back there again. It's pretty much an irrelevant note anyway, unless you get an alert on it. You can also go around and finish up all these other uh, blue glowy missions here, like the spy mission. You can use that there to level up your weapons. Um, possibly get a uh, Ivara part off there, which is a stealth frame. So you can go play that there a bunch of times and hope that you get that there. Don't trigger any of the alarms. It's a corpus spy, so you can choose between... This spy mission and then the one on Earth to farm that Ivara part and potentially the um, dual stat elemental mods for cold and uh, fire. So you can get those off those two spy missions there. And uh, yeah, to be honest, that is pretty much it. Excavation, also a good place to farm some resources as well. If you want to go there, maybe get some more of the resources on the planet, being Palmer bundles, circuits, field drone samples. This is where you see uh, which planet drops what resource, by the way. You can also get that up on the wiki too. Link will be down in the description below. So if you take a look at Earth, we get ferrite, ribido, neurodes, detonite, ampule, things like that there. Venus is, you know, allopate, Palmer, circuits, field drone sample. Move on to Mercury, Morphix, ferrite, Palmer bundle. You know, so on and so forth. It changes from planet to planet. And um, usually whenever you're farming, whenever you're farming resources, I recommend either an excavation or a defense. The reason that I recommend excavation is because you're getting other rewards alongside it. And the reason I recommend defense is because a lot more enemies spawn in a shorter period of time in the defense as well. So that's why we play defense over something like survival, which you'd think would be better, but really the spawns are a lot slower. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to it. Make sure you go farm those parts off the Jackal, get all the Rhino parts, and uh, pre-build them if you can. If you need credits, I recommend just rerunning capture missions over and over again. If you have any um, relics you're able to run, which I actually don't think we can run those yet, can we? Let's see, can we? Let's, let's check. Okay, we can. So... If you are able to, you see this here little tab in the top right hand corner, there's like, like a little fire symbol up here. Press this and then press lift fisher, okay? The lift fishers are the one that you want to do. And then you can choose any of these relics that you farmed up and then use those to get a prime part or a, or a form of blueprint. Now, as a New Year player, I recommend not going for the prime parts unless it is either silver or gold writing whenever you actually get it um, from playing these missions. Because at the end, let's just play it for, as an example. Uh, let's see. As a New Year player, what you want to be getting is something like Forma. So this is probably one of the better relics here for a New Year player to be do running. Lift S4, you get a Paris Prime Blueprint, a Lex Prime Blueprint, Forma Blueprint, a Kavasa Collar, which we don't have, a Kuro yet, Trinity Prime Chassis, and a Seren System. So that's some pretty rare stuff. Just go ahead and press yes, and then that's going to find a group for you. And then you'll be able to run that there and get a, uh, a Prime part from it. So let's just go ahead and start it. Uh, I'm going to apologize to this here guy here for starting this early on him. I don't think he has a relic equipped. Actually, let's leave that squad. And, okay, that's actually disappeared on us now, so I won't be able to show you that. But, um, yeah, so what you want to be doing, whatever you do, you try to get into a mission like that there. My sign just cut off for some reason. Never mind, it was back there. Um, what you want to be doing whenever you get into a mission like that there, try to get into a full squad because every player that has a relic equipped, you're going to get a different reward. And if someone has something like a, a radiant relic, which is like Warframe's way of upgrading uh, a relic, which will allow you to get a rarer part, then you're very lucky, right? So run those uh, Void Fisher missions, which you can see if there's any available up in this top right hand corner. They are timed, as you can see, you can see the time left remaining on them. So you just want to run them in time. And uh, try running invasions if there's any there which you feel like you could run. This here one is level 15 to 17. So it might be a little higher level, but you could run them in a public group and maybe get someone to car you through it if you'd like. You know, there's different things, different ways to farm credits. But capture, excavations, and defense missions are the ones I've played to farm. Uh, some of the better 
parts and stuff, better relics, better endo, better credits in some cases as well. Spy missions for uh, XP and stuff. So unequip weapons that you don't necessarily, you know, want to use. Uh, but then you can re-equip them whenever you need XP, you know what I mean? So, like, say I wanted to level up the Bratton, uh, what I just do is I would unequip my Scanner, so I go down here, I equip my Bratton, or my Paris, sorry, and then I unequip my Scanner, like so, and then I just run through a Spy Mission, and then that'll get all the XP towards my Paris, and then, you know, it's pretty cool, right? You get your, you get your Relic, you get your Ivara part, you get the... Dual stat mods from spam missions, they're worth running. So I just want to reiterate the fact, keep yourself as busy as possible in this game and you will get pretty far. So I know we kind of brushed over a lot of things there, but trust me, it, this part, this planet is super easy. Go in, shoot the Jackal's legs, play with other players, you know, just play in public match. Um, get to the Jackal's quick as possible. Don't waste your time running around in rooms or killing enemies. Just get to the Jackal, kill him and get out because, you know, that's just the best way to do it really. And, um... Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section on my Twitch page or my Twitch live stream whenever I'm live, which you should see whenever I'm live on the left-hand side of the screen. So it should pop up on YouTube. So if I'm live while you're watching this, you can click it and it'll take you right there. And it's in the description below. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.